Hey folks, here at OS Reviews, you're watching our video first look and a quick review of the ZTE Boost Max Plus, an upgrade to the original Boost Max, and as the name suggests, it's a no-contract phone with Boost Mobile here in the United States. It retails for under $200, and at that price, you're getting an impressively large 5.7-inch TFT LCD display. The biggest downside at this bargain price, though, is that the screen only packs a 720p resolution. That means it's not as pixel-dense as 1080p or 4K screens we tend to prefer on a larger device. At 5.7 inches, it's also a little larger than your standard phablet, which may have a 5.5 inch screen instead. As a result, the Boost Max Plus is definitely a more of a device than a pocket-friendly phone that slips easily into your jeans but it offers a great hybrid between a true tablet and a regular phone. And that means if you're constantly watching videos or browsing the web, this may be a great experience to pick up. It's similar to a Samsung Galaxy Note series uh, product, but obviously at a fraction of its cost. Other specifications are also entry level. We have access to a Snapdragon 410 processor, which is a 64-bit processor, which is clocked at 1.2 gigahertz. It's a quad-core chipset coupled with two gigabytes of RAM. So it's nice that they gave us, you know, more than the standard 1.5 gigs we find on these lower priced phones on prepaid networks. There's also 16 gigabytes of built-in flash storage that's expandable via a micro SD card slot on the back. However, the built-in 3,400 milliamp hour capacity battery isn't user replaceable. Taking a closer look at the design of the phone first, there's access to a 1 megapixel camera on the top, which is used for video chatting purposes and selfies, next to a earpiece and a proximity light sensor that automatically dims the screen when you're indoors or outdoors. Down below here, there's access to three capacitive keys for going back, home, and menu. Unfortunately, these can't be reprogrammed, however, they are backlit, which makes them slightly easier to see under lowly lit environments. You can also see that the bezels of the phone are slightly on the larger side of the spectrum, and that's kind of to be expected with a relatively budget-oriented phone. However, it is still a little bit large compared to other phones in the same price bracket, perhaps by LG. This is the G Stylo or the G Stylus 2. It offers the same screen size at 5.7 inches, but you can see how the bezels and the overall form factor is just a little bit smaller and slimmer. The Boost Max Plus also weighs in at 195 grams, which is definitely on the heavier side for a phone that's made predominantly out of plastic instead of aluminum or metal. On the side, there's access to a dedicated power switch, which is tactile and responsive, and there's also a two-stage camera shutter key, which is easy to use for capturing images. What is good is ZTE allows you to reprogram all of the hardware keys, so you can potentially remap these for other functions, like going back or going to the multitasking drawer. The back here, you can see, looks like brushed aluminum, but in fact, it is just made out of plastic, just like on the original Boost uh, Max. You have access to the ZTE logo, a loudspeaker that unfortunately, again, is placed on the back, but it does get pretty loud, and what is good about the sound is ZTE used Dolby uh, Digital's kind of mobile software to enhance the audio quality, and that really does make a difference when you have headphones plugged in. There's also access to an 8 megapixel autofocus enabled camera with an LED flash. Now this is a one piece design, but the top cover here can be peeled back to have access to a micro SIM card slot. Interestingly, the micro SD card slot has been moved to the side, and what resembles a SIM card tray, you do need a SIM ejector tool to open it up. There's also access to a volume rocker, and there's a standard micro USB port for charging. Fully charging up the phone takes roughly three hours to complete, so despite the slightly larger 3,400 milliamp hour capacity battery, it's still relatively swift to charge up the phone, and it will last you for roughly two days before you need to recharge it again, thanks to a low, lower resolution display and the Snapdragon 410 processor, which is very energy efficient. So before we take a look at the software, let's do a brief size comparison. Again, this phone has a 5.7 inch screen, but you can see that in terms of the overall dimensions, it's quite similar to the LG G Flex, and this has a 6 inch screen. So again, ZTE did go for a slightly more conservative look. We wish that the bezels were slightly smaller, but at least it is relatively slim, making it easy to still grip and hold in the hand. Again, next would be G Style O2, which is very similar both in price and availability through carriers, and finally a more traditional kind of 5-inch phone, which I think is more of a standard size phone, and you can 
kind of see the size difference there. So overall, I would say that it's more similar to a 6-inch form factor than a 5.5-inch phablet. Turning the screen on, we're greeted to a fairly traditional version of Android 5.1 Lollipop. There are some tweaks done by ZTE, such as long pressing on the uh, lock screen to enter the home screen, which is pretty convenient, and some other bloatware and apps that are come courtesy of Boost Mobile, but most of these can be uninstalled if you want to. And overall, it's a fairly swift and responsive uh, user interface that we've come to expect since the 410 is a tried and tested chipset. With that being said, it's no longer running on the latest version of Android, which is both to be expected on a budget phone and also on a device that has been released for some time on the market now. Regardless, it's still a very nice and smooth experience and all the apps that you want to install from the Play Store can still be done. So taking a closer look here at the home screen, we have access to a few proprietary ZTE widgets, which also displays your time and your weather information. There's a Google Now search bar on the very top, and I can drag down to have access to the notification shade that gives me a few other options for Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth, and the essentials. This is a 4G LTE phone, so no problems there. Now what is also apparent about the ZTE Boost Max, like most of ZTE's phones, is the screen is very bright, especially when compared with an LG panel, and that really comes in handy if you're outdoors because the screen still remains visible under good lighting environments, which is quite impressive. Otherwise, the screen remains fairly sensitive and it's protected by Corning Gorilla Glass, so you have some durability, although I still wouldn't recommend dropping it since it's not really a rugged phone. Taking a closer look down below, there are access to traditional Google apps pre-installed, so you have access to the standard Google search, Chrome, Gmail, Drive, YouTube clients, Google Hangouts, uh, and the standard suite of entertainment and productivity tools. Taking a look at the camera interface, we can see that it's been slightly tweaked by ZTE. You have a iOS-like uh, experience on the bottom here where you can drag through various modes, and the Pro mode is also quite impressive where you can change things like ISO, uh, the white balance, and there's even calibration meters to see if your shot is aligned properly. The Auto mode does a decent job in and of itself for indoor and outdoor shots and automatically turns on the flash when needed. The Fun mode allows you to apply filters, toggle through panorama modes, multi-exposure modes, macro lens, and create some additional filters without having to edit them uh, afterwards. So the interface itself is clean and easy to use. As far as capturing an image, you do have tap to focus, which is easy to use, and it's extremely swift. There's almost no delay at all when capturing photos, which is great because you can capture tons of continuous photos without even having to wait. Uh, the phone itself is also quite responsive in this regard, and for the most part, even though colors aren't the most vibrant or saturated, it remains a good experience for sharing your images with social media. Taking a closer look at some of those images, again, it's an area where the larger screen real estate really comes into play and makes the experience a lot better. You can see that detail is captured pretty well, especially in well-lit environments, although it doesn't have the widest field of view. Regardless, on a budget phone, the camera does a great job. And again, it's an area where ZTE has been showing ambition for a long time now, ever since the ZTE Flash, which was their first camera phone per se, that had a whopping 13 megapixel camera uh, almost uh, four to five years ago. So so again, they have been improving steadily, and even on a budget phone, you still get a fairly decent experience for photography. Obviously not going to compete with more expensive phones on a market, but does a nice job nonetheless. When it comes to phone quality, we were also fairly impressed with the Boost Max. Uh, here in Seattle, Washington, we consistently got three to four bars of reception with Boost Mobile's network, and because the phone is slightly larger, the microphone is closer to your mouth when you're talking, and that lends itself well when you're in outdoor environments, despite lacking a secondary mic for noise cancellation. The earpiece produced fairly accurate sounds when we did a bit of testing, and the additional enhancements produced by Dolby also comes into play if you want to, again, improve the audio quality and amplify the sound. So speaking of, let's take a quick look at that Dolby app that I talked about. Tapping on the app, we can see some of the software enhancements that are categorized by genres for both playing movies, music, games, and for regular phone calls in general. They're pretty good, and there's also a few demos that you get as well. So for instance, if we tap on movie, uh, we can, again, adjust the volume, tweak the EQ, change the sound signature, all of these things that you rarely see on a phone that's this inexpensive. It really does give you a better experience, especially, again, when you have headphones plugged in and fine-tuning the sound of your music. So again, audio quality, fairly impressive. Loudspeaker also does get reasonably loud, despite being rear-mounted. 
and although the location isn't perfect, it suffices for playing back YouTube clips and a few songs on the go. Taking a quick look at the web browsing experience next, again, if we just use, let's say, Chrome, uh, again, the Snapdragon 410 processor, a quad-core chipset, still does fairly well here in 2017. We had no issues as far as panning around and viewing back complicated ads in addition to sites like the New York Times, which are very dense with uh, information, so it still loads that up in a reasonable amount of time. We see that Swipe has been pre-installed as the keyboard, and it's pretty good for text entry. On a larger screen size, you do have larger keys, and you can swipe your way through characters uh, more swiftly. However, if you don't want to, you can see that the keyboard size can be shrunken down to half of the screen if you want to type using one hand under certain modes. So they, again, have a few software enhancements that uh, makes the phone easier to use, even though this is mostly a two-handed phone. Um, you know, ZTE still makes it possible to type using, let's say, one hand, and access your controls using one hand. Right now we're loading the full version of the New York Times and you can see that's connected to Wi-Fi. It does that pretty well. It takes a few seconds longer than the latest Snapdragon powered flagship phone, but again, this is a fraction of the cost of something like the Galaxy Note 7, so uh, performance still does pretty good. You can do tap browsing on Chrome, it seamlessly integrates with the desktop version as well if you want your bookmarks transferred over, and of course you can add multiple tabs and still have a few things running in the background without too many hindrances. You can see that even the flash elements are loading without too many problems, and pinch to zoom and scrolling is relatively swift and responsive, no doubt thanks to that 2GB of built-in RAM, again a bit more than we're used to on a budget-oriented phone. When it comes to storage, 16 gigabytes is decent. It uh, has three gigabytes taken up by the operating system, but you can still load up your music, your movies, and download a few games without too many problems. You can also expand the storage up to 128 gigabytes with your own micro SD card. So it's quite versatile in this sense, and it's a step up versus the original Boost Max that only came with eight gigabytes of memory. So it's already double that both in RAM and in ROM. Uh, so good enough, I would say. This is the file manager that you can see that allows you to sync between the micro SD card and the phone's internal storage. So it works pretty well. There's also a multitasking uh, app that you can use to split screen between two different programs, which again takes advantage of the slightly larger display size of the Boost Max Plus. So that's been the Boost Max Plus. It's not a phone for everyone, especially folks that want a smaller phone will find that this might be slightly unwieldy. It gets closer to a tablet in size than a traditional smartphone, especially one you know three to four years ago. With that being said, performance is actually pretty good at a low price point. And if you do want a larger screen for viewing back media, for watching videos, browsing the web, then this is a good option to consider. Snapdragon 410 might not be the fastest chipset in the world, but for playing back your day-to-day -day games, uh, you can basically install any app you want to from the Play Store without that many problems. Uh, I would just suggest closing up other apps in the background that you're not using uh, to make the experience feel a little bit zippy. And again, in the day-to-day, -day, it still remains quite fluid and responsive. The camera on here also isn't the best, but the shutter speed is very fast, and as a whole, the phone feels well-constructed for this price. Although it lacks a few extra features, like a stylus for instance, and it doesn't have NFC so there's no mobile payment solutions, it does have all the essentials down, and if you are, again, wanting to get a large size phablet for relatively cheap, this is not a bad choice at all. So you can check out more details in our upcoming official written review, but for now this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews, this has been the ZTE Boost Max Plus, an affordable 5.7 inch phablet from the Chinese OEM ZTE.